the high serotonin personality. So an individual with, and again, this is based off many of the rat studies and also what they found in OCD patients, um, in people, you know, people with ADHD, they've actually discovered that, you know, serotonin, a, a serotonin dominant individual actually possesses the following, um, traits. So the first one is tiredness. And that makes sense because we know that serotonin actually dampens and reduces thyroid hormone. And not only that, serotonin works alongside estrogen. Well, estrogen actually works alongside serotonin to promote each other. They they work they like they work hand in hand. So if you're looking at an individual with high estrogen, uh, there's a good chance that they also have high serotonin. So First point I just mentioned was the tiredness. The next like symptom or, you know, trait of somebody with high serotonin is rigid thinking. So somebody like this would have a hard time being witty or have difficulty, you know, not locking onto a particular thought pattern. Um, as in like, they'll get stuck on particular thoughts. Um, they have mental inflexibility. So, for example, let's say somebody asks you a question, you'll just answer it straight away without deviating or, you know, maybe cracking a little bit of a joke or being sarcastic about it. Uh, instead, somebody with a high serotonin state, they feel, you know, very rigid um, and they actually have reduced cognitive abilities. Um, on the contrary to all of that, a high dopamine state will actually promote mental creativity and like confidence and ability to be sort of witty and even sarcastic. That's definitely one thing that's um, very much pronounced in dopamine dominant individuals. Um, they also like a high serotonin state. They also experience a lot of um, anticipatory anxiety. So for example, somebody who feels leading up to, let's say a big event or something or leading up to, um, like, yeah, I'd say just, let's say, let's use an example of like before a soccer game or before, um, giving a talk, individuals with a high serotonin state will actually have quite a pronounced anticipatory anxiety response. Um, and I won't get into the complexities behind that, but that's related to one of the a serotonin receptors, which heavily influences cortisol. Um, again, we know what cortisol does um, and we know that there's a particular serotonin receptor that, I can, that can actually stimulate cortisol secretion. Um, so <clears throat> we've just spoken about some of the key personality traits of a high serotonin individual. Uh, we also know that they can be very, ov very overly analytical. So they can be overly analytical with like a negative bias to things. Um, and they also have a reduced sense of pleasure as in their pleasure system is actually blunted. They don't feel things like they used to, for example, um, things that should, for example, music or eating chocolate, things like that. If they are blunted and they're no longer as thrilling or as exciting as they used to be, then high serotonin is a possibility and can also be a factor contributing to that. Again, there's many other receptors. There's many other neurotransmitter systems that play a role in anhedonia, which is the inability to experience pleasure, but being serotonin dominant can very much, can very much produce that sort of response. Um, and there are a lot of people who have, you know, either used, SSRIs and are still still facing issues with this blunted feeling. Um, and I'll probably dedicate an entire episode to that because it's quite a quite a big topic.